friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma. If you don't know me already, I make houseplanty videos all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplant journey and learn something along the way, subscribe to my channel and watch some more of my videos. So today I am kind of stealing this video idea from Wild Fern. I saw her do it and I was like, I really want to do it now. So she recently did a video where she shared her favorite plants of different genuses, genii, <laughs> um, but she picked her favorite one in each sort of like plant category and shared them with her viewers. So I thought I would do the same because I think it's interesting. I like seeing what people's favorites of things are. So why not do this too? But yeah, I just picked my favorite of each of the categories and I'm gonna share them with you today. All of them are plants that I either have in my collection right now or that I have grown in the past. I think there's only one that I have grown in the past that I don't currently have. It's my Calathea. I've not got loads at the minute. I think I've got one and it's definitely not my favorite of all time. So anyways, let's get into it and like, let me show you my favorite plants. So I think I'm gonna start with a classic, the Monstera category, and this is my favorite. I don't think it comes to a surprise to any of you that my Monstera Thai constellation would be my favorite. I know mine isn't like particularly insane or big or anything, but I literally grew it from a single leaf cutting and revived it from root rot. And so like the love I have for this thing is absolutely insane. Like the fact that it's gotten this far and has even grown me like a fenestration is huge. Like it is absolutely insane. And I just adore this plant so much. It's like the leaves are just so splashy and I like that the variegation is stable. And like, even though it's kind of in a pain with the root rot, I find them a little bit easier to take care of than my albos because they are stable and because mine's not like the splashiest in the world, it doesn't go as brown as my albos go. So I don't know, I just, I freaking love this thing. And it hasn't put out new growth for me in a while. I think it's sitting pretty dormant over winter, but I don't know. I think I also really need to repot it like, let me pull it out. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think I would say that it needs a repot. It's a bit desperate for one, so I'll probably repot it very soon. Anyways, I just absolutely freaking love this plant. I'm gonna say that about all of them because like, as I said, these are my favorites. Like, it's gorgeous and I love it for being gorgeous, but I'm also just really proud of it and so, it's just so nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. But hopefully I'll get it to grow a new leaf soon and hopefully that leaf will be fenestrated as well because the more fenestrated leaves I can have, the better. <laughs> Next category is philodendrons and this is my favorite from that. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is a heavy one. <laughs> so, this is a philodendron glorious and i have not actually had this one for that that long only a couple of months now um i imported it i suppose from indonesia like it must have been a month or two ago but it has the most insane huge velvety leaves and like it's got a new one. Oh my goodness and like that's brand brand new it only like properly unfurled like a couple days ago and so like it's just really happy and it's like definitely growing into the moss pole that I've got it on it like absolutely loves it I don't know if you can see any of those roots growing in there but there's some there it's just velvety and dark and gorgeous and I don't know what else I could possibly ask for when it comes to a philodendron so my gloriosum was like a very very close runner-up but I think I like the growing style of this one a little bit more. Whereas the Gloria, someone crawls along, this one climbs. And I think I just like that vibe a little bit better. And I find it easier to help it grow bigger leaves. Given, I think in my care, this is like the only leaf that's properly come. This one was already coming in when I got it. So 
I don't know necessarily if it's gonna be bigger quite yet, but it's not hard by any means. It's not hardened off, so I'm not like, I'm not worried about it growing bigger leaves because I'm sure it will. But also the care of this one is quite easy. I've found it to be pretty easy going. I just water the moss pole. I don't actually water the soil. Um, and it acclimated really well. I kind of just chucked it in my Ikea cabinet and it's been fine ever since. So uh, it's just, it's just fantastic. And I know I'm gonna have to figure out a better situation for the poles. And it's probably not gonna fit in my Ikea cabinet for long because it's freaking massive. But for now, it can live in there and just be its little happy self. Ah, I love it so much. My favorite in the Syngonium category is the Syngonium Grey Ghost slash Green Splash. And this is actually one of the ones I got from Green Spaces ID. I have had one previously, but it did not fare very well and died. So uh, <laughs> I was super, super happy to receive another one from Green Spaces. And this has been doing so, so well. I've only had it for a couple weeks now, and I was so afraid that it was going to die in the acclimation process because it was in the mail for three weeks. And it's just doing perfectly fine. Like I've just got it in some perlite and it's got some insane roots. Like ugh. these ones are the old roots down here. I don't think they're rotted per se, but it's definitely got some new ones. I might pull this out um, in maybe a week or two and make sure that none of those roots are rotted in there. But I am just obsessed with these leaves. They're like such a pale light green. Like this is one of my favorite colors. And with those dark spots as well. And then they also come out kind of pinky purpley in the middle. Like literally I don't know what's not to love with these. They're just so special and it's like my ideal Syngonium. Like I, I, I don't know how else to describe how nice it is. It's just my ideal Syngonium. It looks exactly how I want it to and so far it's been growing really well and like it's nice and compact and the leaves are a good size and I just love it so much. <laughs> oh yeah and like Grey Ghost like that's such a funky name. I love it. <laughs> um, Very like spooky so just absolutely fabulous. I'm obsessed. My favorite Hoya of all time, I think, is this Hoya Croniana Super Silver. And I mean, y'all know why I like this one. I am obsessed with its like insane silvery leaves. I kind of like this one for the same reason I like the Syngonium. Like, it's got the silver leaves, but it's also got like little splashes of dark green as well so it's just amazing and I didn't actually realize how much it's grown since I got it like it actually has grown a decent amount I only looked at it the other day and looked at the picture from when I first got it and I was like whoa that's actually like a pretty decent change I'll try and put the picture here if I can find it it's just it's just so easy going and even though it's a small plant, it's been growing pretty well for me. And it doesn't live in the brightest of spots, but it doesn't mind it that much, which is really nice. And I just don't have to worry about it. And I mean, look how good it looks in this pot. Like, tell me it's not perfect. I mean, don't, because it is perfect. Yeah, you can't tell me it's not perfect. Ugh. My favorite alocasia you have seen recently in my alocasia black velvet care video. If you have one of these and you've not seen that video yet, go check it out. It is, in my opinion, good. <laughs> but this alocasia, it just has everything I could possibly want when it comes to alocasias. Like, it has grown so, so well for me in the time I've had it. I think I've had it for, like two years now and I got it from this tiny baby three leaf cutting not cutting it was a proper plant but it was tiny it was baby and I've been able to like grow it this 
far, which I don't know. I know I'm like quite young in terms of my plant journey. I'm not the youngest out there. I've been growing plants for like four years now, I think, approximately. So like I'm new in the grand scheme of things, but being able to like watch your plants grow big like comparatively has been one of the best things and this one in particular has really really done that for me it has properly gone for it this is its newest leaf and it's even bigger than the one before it and it's got the insane black velvety leaves that i love and these sparkly like white veins like there's there's literally nothing not to love about this one as well like it's just such a good one and i will say that i think a lot of its success is because i've had it in pawn i think pawn for jewel allocations is the best option i've had nothing but success with it with allocations in pawn so i would highly recommend that if you're trying to grow your black velvet larger that is the perfect way to do it but I love it and I love alocasia so much. I think just because my home is quite humid, I'm able to keep them quite happy and also I have them in the Ikea cabinet for the most part and they're gonna love the humidity in there as well. So I just, I feel lucky to do pretty well with alocasias and this one especially because it's just like, it's just dreamy. It's so dreamy. It's just perfect. My favorite Epip Remnum is the Epipremnum Cebu Blue, Cebu Blue. Like, oh, those leaves. So this one was one of the hardest to pick because like Epipremnum and Pothos are some of my absolute favorites, like of all time. And there were so many options that I could have picked. Like they're all very high up there in terms of my favorite plants, just because they're just so robust so easy going and like fairly fast growing as well i i don't notice it when i look at my plant every day but if you go back and look what the plant looked like a month or two ago you'll see how much it's changed and it's like the amount of growth is awesome so it was really hard to pick but i did end up picking the Cebu blue which is not a surprise for anyone who knows me and knows that i like silver leaves Surprise, surprise. So, like, I'm also really proud of this one because for a long time I had it just trailing down and I don't think it liked it all that much. It started growing like quite small leaves, but ever since I put it on the moss pole, you can actually see the difference in leaf size. It's quite dramatic and like, I didn't really think it was liking the moss pole, but look at that. Do you see these roots all the way in here? Just like going crazy. Like it loves it. It absolutely loves the moss pole. And this is why I like the clear bag ones because being able to see that just like showed me that I was giving it what it wanted. And it's like properly attached itself now. So I probably don't even need the ties on it. Like it's, it's in there, it's not going anywhere, so. I'm just so proud of it and I'm hoping that one day it decides it wants to give me fenestrations because that would be so cool. Of course, I'm not like holding my breath. It's gonna take a minute and a half to do that, but I think we are getting closer and closer and the day, the day it happens, I will probably cry tears of joy because I'm just gonna be so freaking excited. Like I'll just like, I don't even know how to describe how excited I'll be. It'll just be like, It'll be such a good day, <laughs> one day. Um, I probably do need to put more moss in this pole actually because it's starting to get closer to the top of it. Um, or I can maybe train these to go down and up again. Either way, they it's just an amazing plant and I love how it's not as uncommon anymore as well. I like that it's a lot more accessible and easy for people to get because like, I feel like a year ago even, this was like a really popular plant, but it was so hard to find. People were selling cuttings for like 15 pounds for one leaf or like even 30 pounds for a single leaf, like with node. And that just felt so outrageous to me. 
like it's a pop off <laughs> like why um, and so I'm really really glad that people have started selling them for a lot less because it means that I can afford something this size I mean I didn't buy it this size I kind of grew it this size from small cuttings but like <laughs> having a plant this size is a bit more attainable now um, if you want to buy one from a store which is awesome so Cebu Blue Pothos, Epipremnum, Panatum, Cebu Blue. I would almost go as far to say that this might be one of my favorite plants of all time. If not my absolute favorite of all time. That's a big deal. <laughs> I just love it so much. And like, even though it's not like the biggest, splashiest plant out there and it's not the most rare or anything, that's not why I like it. I like it because it's easy and it's beautiful. And like, how can you not? It's just so great. <laughs> so a lot of you probably know that Scandapsis is one of my favorite genus, genii of all times. So it's also really hard to pick my favorite one of these because I have quite a few and I love all of them so so much but I ended up deciding that this one was my favorite and this I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is it was sold to me as a Scandapsis silver hero but I am 95% sure that it is not a silver hero because it goes so so differently to my silver heroes like my silver heroes don't have any of this like splotchiness in the leaves so it leads me to believe that it might be a Scandapsis tattoo, which it's definitely like one that if this is not one is on my wish list, but overall like it's just so beautiful and it's been growing pretty well for me. It's just in, I feel like it's a mixture of like soil and moss and perlite and pollen. <laughs> I don't know, it's not really clear what's in there, but I should probably repot it at some point because it needs some space for those roots and maybe even put it on a pole. I don't know, I think I prefer Scandapsis trailing downwards. I might chop and prop and like try and make a fuller plant out of it because it is a bit spindly. It's like not the most beautiful plant as a whole, but I think its leaves are like the most magical part about it. Like. They're just insanely gorgeous and like so silvery and there's just nothing not to love about them. So I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I love it so much. And again, this is probably up there with some of my favorite plants like of all time. <laughs> my favorite Maranta is this Maranta Lemon Lime. It is so happy and I I wouldn't like if someone told me that I grew this from tiny cuttings I wouldn't actually believe them I don't know why but I I never thought I would actually grow one so well but this one is just like growing amazing like this is coming from one stem this whole bit so like it's branching out and it's just being the gorgeous thing that it is it's just so special and like this is another one and it has battled spider mites and thrips and won it won the battle so it's like i'm just so freaking proud of this plant and again this is another one that was like probably considered more rare like obviously not botanically rare but like more hard to find in the like hobbyist community so like it was much more expensive when I bought it than it would be to buy one like this now. But I just love these leaves and I just like how they go from sort of like dark green through the neon -y veins. They're just fabulous and it's not my biggest Maranta. Well, I mean, it's my biggest in like size like this, but it's not got the biggest leaves in the world, but it's just so happy and healthy and I love watching it grow and seeing like new leaves emerge. It's just, it's just such a joy. It's such a pleasure plant. 
and I don't have to do that much work to keep it happy, which is great as well. This one is another one that I have in Pawn. I think Marantas love Pawn. All of my Marantas that are in Pawn have been so extremely happy that like, <laughs> they just grow like crazy, which is awesome. So it's just, it's just a fabulous plant. I wonder if this is root bound. Okay, well, it's not root bound, but like it definitely has some roots that are coming out of the holes of the pot, going into the water reservoir. Being careful not to kill them as I close it and to not drip on myself too much, but it's just gorgeous. Just so pretty. My favorite string of plant is my string of hearts silver glory again i feel like it's pretty obvious why i like this one it's silver but anyways i love it it was actually like twice as long as this but i think i chopped it maybe a week ago maybe two weeks ago and it's already starting to grow new growth in there which means it's very happy so like I've got another set of strings propping that I'm going to put back in this pot once they have grown roots and stuff because I would love so much just like a really full long luscious plant of this it's just I like how it's not like actually hearts as well I don't know if that's weird but I like that they're not actually heart shaped they're kind of more like butt shaped which is kind of funny but they're just gorgeous little leaves so cute and so little and like I found that mine hasn't gotten that much smaller in leaf size which is awesome and it's not gotten too too leggy so it's just a good one and I think I do prefer like the string of hearts category over things like string of pearls string of bananas stuff like that I do have some string of pearls but when compared to this it's like this is like a hundred percent no question it's this this is my favorite genus of kitty cat, <laughs> my Cleo. <laughs> I love her dearly, but I want to continue. So I'm gonna put you down. I'm gonna put you down, baby. So my favorite Calathea, Calathea, is one that I don't have, like I said earlier, but it's one I used to have. It was the Calathea ornata. I was obsessed with this Calathea. I loved it so so much. I loved the, like really dark leaves with the, like the pink stripes in it. It was also one of my like earlier plants. One of the first, oh goodness, one of the first that I got um, when I kind of started collecting plants. It, I got it quite early on in my plant journey and it did really well for me actually. It grew super well until it got thrips and I j found it too late and it became more work than it was worth to try and save it. That was before I had figured out like my kind of, not foolproof, but like my surefire system of getting rid of thrips. So I didn't have a way to save it well and it was just becoming so much work to try and keep it alive. So I did decide to get rid of it, which is unfortunate. I think I would definitely buy another one today. I really, really like the way they look and I've not got one. So it's definitely something that's, I suppose it's on my wish list, um, which is kind of funny. Um, it feels like such a like basic plant to be on my wish list, but I mean, I've not got one and I want one. So there we go, wish list plant added. But it's like, it's just such a gorgeous plant and it grew really well and they can grow so big. Mine was like quite a large sized one. I just wish I could have it back. I don't, I don't regret giving it away because I needed to do that at the time for like my own sanity. But I say giving it away, I mean giving it away to the rubbish bin. <laughs> but I don't regret like getting rid of it. But I miss it, is all I have to say. I do miss my Calathea Ornata. It's probably one of the only Calatheas that I would get anymore because I'm not like the biggest fan of that genus in general. Like they're not my faves. So I probably wouldn't get any others if it wasn't an Ornata. That's just something. I would still buy an Ornata. This is a bit of an interesting one, 
because the category of Sansevieria doesn't really exist now. They're officially Dracaenas. And my favorite Dracaena, slash Sansevieria, I guess, is this. <laughs> this is a Dracaena White Jewel. And I absolutely love this plant. I very, very, very rarely show it anywhere. Um, I talked about it in one of my recent Patreon videos where I showed a bunch of plants that I don't ever show, and this was one of them. But I love it. I think it's just such a staple of my household, and it has grown so, so well. Like, I think I got it when it was like about there. Cleo's like really interested in it. I got it when it was about there, and it's grown all of this recently. But like, you don't notice it growing because of the way it grows. It doesn't like unfurl a new leaf how like philodendrons or monstera do. It just kind of grows from the top middle so you don't notice it as much. Yep, yeah, Cleo really wants it. <laughs> she loves trying to bite this plant. That's why it has like some damage on some of these leaves. This one in particular, very, very Cleo damaged. But yeah, I think when I had to pick, this was also an interesting one because out of all of my like snake plants in Sansevieria, this still topped it. And I have so many snake plants and this was still the winner. So it like, I, I like snake plants in Sansevieria. I think they're great, but when compared to this, I prefer this. So <laughs> I think that's really interesting. I, I'm surprised that that is the choice that I made. Like, I wouldn't have expected that to be the answer, but it was. So, it's very, very interesting. So, my favorite anthurium is one you have definitely seen recently. It's this. My crystallinum! <laughs> I recently showed this in my, like, one year update on my imports from Equigenera video. And, oh my god. It's just insane. It's so beautiful and so big and so huge. I'm obsessed with this plant. Like, do you see this leaf? It is absolutely insane. And it's like still not hardened off yet. It's, I think, very nearly the same size as the one before it. <laughs> oh, like, I really like anthuriums. I think they're really cool, and especially the velvet anthuriums. And this one has just grown beyond all of my expectations. Like, I think when it was putting out this leaf and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and like what this was the one the size before, like the difference between those two, it's just, it amazes me so much. And it makes me so happy to like watch them grow and expand that like, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> it's just such a beautiful plant. And then the last genus that I want to talk about is ficus. And this is my favorite ficus. It's also one of two ficuses I have at the minute. I've had several ficuses throughout my time. Um, mostly slash only ficus elastica. I've not had any like ficus benjamin or anything. Those don't really do it for me. I'm not as keen on those. I much prefer ficus elastica and these like sort of big rubbery leaves, rubber plants. They're much more up my alley, but I just really, really, really love this one. Like how can you just not love these amazing, gorgeous, speckly leaves that have the lights in there and the darks and like the kind of pink at the same time. And this one has grown like freaking crazy, like better than any ficus elastica that I've had before. Like my Black Prince, which I actually gave to Joe's parents as a gift. That barely grew new leaves. And my Taniki, it got spider mites and I had to chop it up and it's doing fine. Like it's okay. But it's nothing compared to this one. This is like, this is like the creme de la creme of ficus in my opinion. It's just so gorgeous. And like, it's even putting out a new leaf right now. It's just been absolutely pushing them out. Like I'm pretty sure all of these like lighter ones have been since I've had it. Like it's just fantastic. I'm, I love this plant so much. It is so gorgeous. 
So yeah, that is my last plant genus that I wanted to talk about. Those are all my favorites. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If there's any plants in this video that I haven't spoken about that you want me to talk about more and you might want to see a care video on, let me know down below in the comments. Or if there's any plants in general you want me to talk about, let me know. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching. And if you haven't watched Wild Friends video on this, I will link it down below in the description. This is not my original idea, this is hers. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.